three heads on the shoulders. There's the side, the front, and the back. This one's gonna hit all three heads, all right? So what we're trying to do here is get a warm up in. We're just gonna try and get as much blood into the shoulders as possible. So when we're doing shoulders, I'm a big fan and doing high reps first of all. So that's all we're trying to do. So keep the form nice and tight. Right in front, and straight to the top. So again, all we're trying to do here is get as much blood into the shoulders first. What's up everybody, Coach Colt here. I use that word coach loosely right now because the shoe's on the other foot this time. I'm actually being coached by Coach Mark Ennis from Dublin, Ireland. He's here teaching me what low volume training with high intensity is really like. So we're building the shoulders primarily today and the triceps and a little bit of biceps. This is part two of three of our low volume training series. If you are unfamiliar with what low volume training with high intensity is like, please go back and watch the first video. We talk all about how Dorian Yates is pretty much the guy who really made this popular. It's been used by a number of very highly uh, competitive bodybuilders and it's what Coach Mark and Coach Jonathan from the UK have been educating me on over the last year over Carnivore Coach's Corner, our nutrition podcast. But having him train me in person was a completely different experience. I did not know what training to failure was really like until this dude was breathing down my neck and making me force those last couple reps out. We're just going to walk down the reps. So just give me 10. Okay, let's go 10 reps. Keep it tight, keep it tight. So as you can see here, guys, what we're doing here is we're not wasting any time. We're just trying to get the shoulders as warm as possible. So the pattern that you're gonna see is two light warm-ups followed by one to two heavy warm-ups and only one working set where you're gonna go to failure and then you're gonna give it everything that you absolutely have and maybe even push a little bit past failure if you can. The three to four warm-up sets are gonna be used intuitively. So what you're gonna see is Coach Mark asking me questions about how to identify where to be at with those first couple sets. We're not even counting reps and we're keeping the weight nice and light, just focusing on getting a pump, getting blood into the muscles. Then when we move on to the heavy sets, we're really pushing the envelope, not even, not anywhere close to a one rep max, but just heavy enough so that it stimulates those fast twitch fibers. And from there, you can accurately judge how much weight to use for your one and only working set. Obviously with this exercise, we're not gonna do any heavy warmups before hitting the main working set in which we're gonna go to failure that would put your rotator cuffs in a very, very vulnerable situation. You do not want to snap one of those. That will end your career or set you back majorly. So what he's explaining to me to do is to do as many reps as I possibly can. And then when I can't lift the weight anymore, then I'm just going to do partial reps on the bottom. So he's going to have me do as many of those as I possibly can. See, I hit failure. And so now I'm just doing the bottom part of the motion, which is as high as I can actually lift the dumbbells at this point. I can't go over my head, but I can still do this one okay. And then he's having me hold it out for the, on the side for as long as I possibly can. All right, guys, so the next exercise now, as you can see, it's pumped. It feels good. Now, what we need to do here is we're not going to waste too much energy. Waste, we're going to go into our first compound movement. We're not going to waste an awful lot of energy. We're just going to warm them up. Okay, we have about one to five reps. We're going to work up in the weight until we get to a sticking point, And then we're going to do our main, main set. Now, when you look at the bench, I'm in favor of making sure that the bench is at a 90 degree angle. Simply because when we look at the shoulder, we're working the front delta. Now what I want them to do here is, if you look at the arms, I don't want him to bring his arm back too far here. If he brings his arm back too far here, he's going to stretch his rotator cuff. So what we're going to do here is going to drop the elbows in. Now when he's pushing the weight up, I need him to focus on pushing the chest upwards. So as he drives the weight up, you can see exactly where he's working there. Whereas if he's right here, then he's going to overstretch this muscle. We don't want that. We don't want any, any, any injuries. Okay, safety first. So elbows in. You're going to drop it down to where right here. You don't need to go down too far. If you go too far, again, you're going to stretch the rotator. So keep your elbow in line with your shoulders. And really, as you push the weight up, I want you to push from here. So if you push, control the weight down. Push. The last part, as you go all the way up, you don't need to lock out. Because if, if he locks out, he can hold that way up there. You want to keep tension on the shoulder. So drop down a small bit. That's where you're going to start. That's where you're going to stop. That's your starting position. That's your finishing position. Starting position, 
finishing position. Not going any lower than that? Okay. So here again, we are not counting reps right now. We are using very, very light weight. Our goal as bodybuilders should be to use as little weight to do as much damage to the muscle fibers as you can. In fact, you should be able to do this particular exercise without any weight at all for your first warm up set if you're really getting your mind inside the muscle deep enough. So warm up set number one was 20 pounds for about 20 reps, nowhere even close to failure. Then he had me bump up to 30 pounds for about 15 reps, somewhere around there. Okay, so we just did two light sets with lightweight. Now we're gonna do two heavy warm up sets with heavier weight than what we would normally use for an actual working set. We're still using very slow, very strict form making sure that we're not getting injured, but pushing it a little bit heavier than normal to figure out how much weight to use for this one and only failure set. It's very, very important that your mind is deep, deep, deep inside the muscle. You'll see that I'm not even opening my eyes for the most part. I'm keeping them closed so that I can think about the damage that is taking place to my shoulders. And you can see Mark helped me on those last couple of reps that I wasn't able to get up on my own. That's what a training partner is for. If you're by yourself and you want to push past failure a little bit, you can always do partials at the bottom, or you can grab a lighter pair of dumbbells and just do a drop set after. You guys, what's very, very therapy? Is stretch is not, is not good. Now watch the way in. Watch the way in. Bring it all the way in. He's not getting, he's not getting a full stretch on his shoulders. Bring your legs behind you, knees up here. Push the weight as far as you can out like this. Now you can see there's a stretch. Okay, see my arms? Now there's a long stretch. Sorry about the lighting on this video clip. I'm not really sure what happened here, but you can see that he has me leaning further forward. And so my hands are actually at a higher angle than where my shoulders are. And that stretches out my rear deltoids a lot more. I'm really glad that he showed me this variation of reverse pec decks because my reverse pec, tra uh, pec deck training up until that point had been upright and I've been doing a lot of uh, face pulls for rear delts, but never the first exercise that he had me do, which he kindly reminded me also hit the rear delts, <laughs> but I'm just not used to it, not used to feeling them that way. So this variation was a lot different, but something I really enjoyed and I'm gonna use a lot more moving forward. Uh, so I feel that way better in my rear delts now. I'm feeling more of a stretch, whereas before it kind of felt more like a row, but leaning forward, I can feel how Rear delts right here. That's giving it a deeper stretch that I haven't really had before. Nice. Want to do one more? Yeah. Knees and reps. Let's go. Two more. Come on, Cameron. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Yeah, give me this. Go. Do the first. Stand towards me. Yeah, bounce towards me. Here, fast. One. Two. Faster. Faster. Three. Come on. Four. Come on. More car. Come on. Five. No. Four. Come on. Let's go. Push, push. One more. One more. How you All right, so now that the deltoids have officially been desolated, we are isolating the triceps. He's touching them to make sure that I'm getting a good mind muscle connection. And we're keeping the same rep scheme as we have been with the previous exercises. Two light sets, two heavy sets. I'm just finishing my failure set right now and you really wanna squeeze and hold that last rep for as much as it's worth. Try to flex here and there between sets two and keep blood in the muscle. Arnold Schwarzenegger was always a fan of isometric exercise in the form of posing post-workout, but even during your workout, it's a great idea to do between sets. Common question we've been getting, feedback from our athletes on this one, is that if your workout is taking longer than an hour, you're probably spending too much time during your warm-up sets, and you're probably spending too much time identifying where you need to be for your main working set. That's okay because your first your first time doing these workouts, if it's a new technique, you're probably going to have to spend a little time trying to find out exactly where you should be for your one and only working set. But if you track your workout when I'm done, I'm talking you write down every single exercise, every single warm up set, and every single main set. You do that, you'll save so much time going back into the next time you do that workout. You'll probably reduce it by about thirty to forty percent. The first time that I did this workout when I got back home, it took me an hour and 15 minutes to complete it. 
the second time that I did it, it took me about 45 minutes. And the last exercise might be the most fun, but we decided to do arm blaster curls for the purpose of isolating the biceps. One thing with low volume training, which is already a pretty advanced technique, and so if you're doing low volume training, you've probably done a number of bicep curling exercises to build them as big as they are. And so at this point in my training and in most of our athletes training, we're doing less volume overall, particularly in the arms. If you're smashing your presses, if you're smashing your pulling moves, your biceps are already getting a lot of work and they don't need to be isolated quite so much. So we're only doing one warm up set and then we're gonna do Arnold Schwarzenegger's 21 rep method for the second and for the main failure set. I mean, the arm blaster itself is already so classic and so old school and so much fun to use. Why not be really old school about it and use the 21 rep method? Hey everyone, Coach Taylor Milton here. Welcome to Skull Bells TV, the official YouTube channel of supersetyourlife.com where you're gonna discover a weekly upload of quick and easy to follow workout tutorials featuring Coach Colt, myself, or one of our athletes to keep your workouts fun, practical, and effective. Our family's latest keto carnivore recipes that fuel Colt's competitions and keep myself and our kiddos strong and healthy. Video uploads of the supersetyourlife.com podcast, now over 100 episodes, your weekly dose of entertainment, education, and inspiration to fuel your life inside and beyond the gym, and much more. Last thing before we get into the video, we're asking a big favor from you. This has been working beautifully. So if you would please think of someone you care about that would benefit from this video, go ahead and smash that like button, click the share button and text this video to them. That would mean the world to us. And while you're at it, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss more exciting content from School Bells TV because our team has lots of meat and lots of muscle coming your way and I promise you won't want to miss it. When you hit the subscribe button, you'll see a bell icon pop up. You wanna click that too, so you're notified every time we release a new video. Thank you so much for the support. It means the world to us. Every like, share, and subscription helps our channel grow and supports our family's hard work. So thank you so much for doing your part too. That's all we ask. God bless you and please enjoy this video. So I hope all that made sense. Got a super juicy pump off of that workout, which was perfect timing because right after that, we did a photo shoot with Hiro Chang, our co-host of the Open Natural Bodybuilding Competition. So if you are a natural bodybuilder looking for a cost-effective bodybuilding competition in which to participate in 2024, Mark your calendars for July of 2024. And we're gonna put a link in the show notes below that has all the information for the Open Natural Bodybuilding Competition. We did six working sets all together today. Um, with the shoulders, we didn't need to do an awful lot of volume because if you're hitting your chest, they're gonna be hit pretty well. So what we did, we did two isolation movements. We did one for the rear delt, and then we pretty much hit the, the shoulders from the three heads. Mm -hmm. So at the very, very beginning, we hit all three heads pretty much effectively. Okay, so then after that, then we, we went over to the triceps. Now, my opinion is, if you wanna have big arms, you're better off training them individually. The reason why that is because everybody has a strong arm. So it could be right arm your, your, or your left arm. For me, it's the right arm. So if I'm gonna push down like this, let's say I'm, I'm gonna push down like that. I'm pushing more with my right side because that's my strongest right. side. Whereas if I just focus on isolating the movement and just doing one arm at a time, if I manage to get 50 in on this side, I know I have to try and get 50 in on this side. So and, I make sure... And we found a couple muscle imbalances that you yeah. had a couple months yeah. ago. So that's why we started doing yeah. the same thing exactly. with you. We fixed them. Exactly. Nice. Then at the end, then he was completely fried. His body's warm. We don't need to waste any more energy on warming up the arms. His arms are already on fire. So we just went straight into one bicep uh, exercise. He chose uh, 20 ones. Yep chose 20 once and um, I'm just completely fried and did one warm up, one more set to failure and look at him, pumped to shreds, feeling very, very good. Thanks pal. Goodbye.